So you did America. Oh, that's way A M E R I K A. We're talking it. about large productions. Yes, the reason we talked about Lion King, we talked about Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. America was a seventeen-hour ABC miniseries, yeah. miniseries. It was immense. Was it Robert Shelter was the director. Of it? Something like yeah. that. What was that like? I honestly cannot remember. Can't remember. Eh? No, but if you're talking about big productions, when we did Day After Tomorrow, that was right. Kind of the same ilk, but it's. It's, it's fun to be on those big sets. It's fun to be surrounded with that kind of, of visual support. You it's mean it's how they're setting up the scenography and the DOP oh, and the yeah. lights and the whatever and the, yeah, that's and, what you mean. And there's no expense spared. Suddenly, you know, the, the costume you're wearing is like tailored to you. There's, the scene is kind of tailored to you. And in that, there was just three of us. And guess what, you know, Ian Holmes and Adrian Lester, and that's just the three of us. Wow. And I'm going, how's that possible? Well, wow. you know, have you had experience uh, in film and television that's, mm, I don't want to say, uh, been as pinnacle like as things like in the theater? But you know, in theater, you have done things that have been obviously meant something to you and to us, the viewers. Have you had that in film and television as well? No, no, I don't think I have. Something where I found of equal value on stage. Yeah. Or, yeah. So I have to repeat that. On all your film and television work, you've not had an acting experience that actually fulfilled the need to communicate, to express the way it's happened in theater? Maybe once or twice, but certainly not a as much as theater. No. On behalf of the, Canadian film, of the film and television industry, I apologize. Oh. No, no. <laughs> For an industry that huge, than to offer that little uh, to someone of your talent um. is no is a depressing in the macro is a depressing situation that so much can be created so much resource so much film time so much script time and yet the actual creative rewards for both the audience and the performers are very scant to find that's true that they think but by the pay you make that compensates for it the size of the check does fill in the gap, so yeah. to speak. But it's it's also, you know, like it's, I don't know whether I have, for instance, personally speaking, have a face for film and TV that I would get to do the roles I, I want to do because of the way I look. What does that mean, a face for film and television? There is a certain face that does well on, on film. What kind of face? Um, oh. I agree, I've just never yeah. tried to define it. Uh, in essence, I think if you look at the standard American viewpoint, as far as men, uh, large head, sharp body, muscular. You know, that, that feels Tom Cruise, that's, you know, that was at one time, um, oh my God, who am I thinking? That poor disgraced Australian actor. Uh, oh yes, what's his name, yeah. Mel, Mel Gibson. Yep. yep. You know, there are many, many examples. You know, I think Russell Crowe kind of breaks that ilk, but generally speaking, there's a certain look, big heads do look well on camera. No, it's true. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. I mean, big head, small shoulders. I love him as an actor. Oh, he's brilliant. I just love him. But he's, he's got brilliance as well as the, the right package, you know. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's true. And there's something about it just, first of all, they have chins. <laughs> you know, I don't have a dominant chin. <laughs> I came from that family that has weak chins. Why didn't you go get one? I was thinking about it. Did you? Oh, yeah, one time. You thought of surgery? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Way back in the 70s out in Edmonton. I saw my profile once and I said, God, that my chin? And I start walking around like this all the time. And I said, that's kind of stupid, isn't it? <laughs> Hi, Rick, how are you doing? <laughs> you know, and then I had a doctor out there. He said, you know, I can fix that. I said, what, you can't? What, what does it involve? Well, I, I got to break your jaw here. I got to break your jaw over here. And I'll move it up like this. And I'll take a, a rib out of your side and put it in here for me. I said, what? <laughs> I said, I'll live with the chin. <laughs> <laughs> how many actresses do we know have had work done? I don't know one. I know several. <laughs> There's a few, yes. I know several. Yeah. So, interesting. Yeah. But it's just, you know, we're trying to fit the package and suddenly realize, leave it alone. Whatever is meant to be will come to you if it's meant to be. I have a really, I breathe an enormous sigh of relief when a film or a television program dares to show me human faces. Yes. 
and not faces from TV and film world. Whether I'm seeing The Wire or whether I'm seeing, uh, oh God, what's the one, the Dallas one that Joan Mark Valet just did, uh, the Dallas Buyers Club. Yes. I want to cheer because the confidence of the writer, the producers to say, here's people and we think, we have faith in people and they can carry the yeah. story. It's like the shackles fall off and I feel free to enjoy the story as opposed to being given to me by the TV faces of the man and the TV prettiness of the woman and the TV handsomeness or the film hands that becomes these encrusted like barnacles on, on narrative at a certain point. Oh, absolutely. And it, it's like someone said, why would you not trust someone with a normal human face to tell you the news? And it is a corrosive element on our, our relationship to narrative storytelling and in our, in our game, film and television story. Absolutely, and it, it shuts the door a lot of times when it, it yeah. really shouldn't. And some of the best films I've ever seen and the most long-lasting films have your face and their face because they belong to the world and yeah. not to the special world of TV looks. Well, that's where the Brits have us. Yes, they do. You know, they, they have real people. But you talk about confidence that is a confidence of that British producer, that French producer, that you know, Brazilian producer to say, I don't care, that's, that's the face. Absolutely. They carry the story. And we don't have that here. North American television film really doesn't have a lot of that confidence. And that's what, you know, you were responding to John Hirsch. No, I'll work on it. So go talk to them, Rick. Sort them out. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll go. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right behind you. I know, I love it. <laughs> yes. Who's going to go first? Come on. No, you go. You go. You go.